When I was growing up, my mother used to buy my shoes at various shoe stores in the Huntington Village, shops like Tom McCann, Buster Brown's, and Stillman's. I have no memory as to where my clothing came from, not a single stitch. It was a big deal when rumors that a mall was going to be built within walking distance of my home. Clothing, shoes, LPs, big stores. Oh, how exciting. One of the early proposed plans for the Walt Whitman Shopping Center was an open-air mall with supermarkets at both ends and one large flagship department store in the middle, as seen in this 1954 blueprint. I think that the existing building in the lower left is Whitman Lanes, a popular bowling alley that opened in 1951. The design that we are most familiar with had no supermarkets and two anchor stores, one on each end of the mall, which by this time became Long Island's first enclosed shopping mall. Its official name was the Walt Whitman Shopping Center, but we always just called it the mall. In March of 1962, Abraham and Strauss, a.k.a. A&S, opened on the north end of the mall, it was the ANS Corporation that actually purchased the land for the shopping center. The R.H. Macy store opened on September 18, 1962 on the south end of the mall. J.G. McCrory's had its own grand opening ceremony with, apparently, Julie Newmar and Rudy Valley in attendance. The original mall was decorated with four huge mobiles representing Walt Whitman's poems. They were designed by Bogdan Gram, an artist known for his architectural installations. The mall's public areas had a Japanese influence with rock gardens, ornamental pools, and fountains. The entire mall opened to the public on November 23, 1962. Mrs. Robert Wagner, the wife of the mayor of New York, cut the ribbon. There was an estimated 80,000 people at the opening. The highlight of the mall was the bird cage and its majestic peacock. Occasionally, the birds did escape from the cage. The mall had many events during its time, including symphonic concerts, trade shows, art shows, antique shows, and even trout fishing. A 36 by 24 foot indoor pond would be installed and kids would pay 25 cents to borrow a fishing rod. There was a $100 incentive to hook Zebco, a four-pounder who remained elusive in the pool. Over 300 fish would be caught during the day using pretzel and bacon bits for bait. On a curious note, the Fantasy Barnyard would come to town with 53 animals, including Donna, the African chimpanzee, who was allowed out of her cage once a day to ride her bicycle to the nearest snack bar to purchase an ice cream cone. There were no animal labor laws then, so Donna was required to clean her own cage. Later, Zippy, the performing chimp, would star on his own at the mall. Remember the Puritan blue laws that prevented businesses from opening on Sundays? Crown Drug Store was the only place open on Sundays where we can buy the New York Times newspaper. With the mall doors locked, you would enter through its back door. My mother was an avid Sunday New York Times puzzler. We trekked to Crown Drugs every Sunday morning and then made another stop for bagels. At the south end, outside the mall, was Cookie Steak Pub and the Whitman Theater. The theater showed its first feature film, Dr. No, on May 28, 1963. The first tickets sold on opening night were to benefit the Suffolk County Leukemia Society. Do you know what and where something happened on May 16, 1991 at the mall?